Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is August the 22nd in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Well, welcome back, friends, and it's such a blessing to have you again with us this morning. Now, we're going to continue and finish the Lord's Prayer given us in John chapter 17. So if you have your Bibles, open to John chapter 17, and let's begin at verse 20. Now, when we finished yesterday, Jesus completed praying for the disciples. And in verse uh, 20, he says, Neither pray I for these alone, not just the twelve, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now, friends, we can truly say that the reason you believe today and the reason that I believe today, the reason that we know the message of the Lord Jesus is because of the work of the 12 disciples. From 12 men, literally, the earth has been covered and saturated with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have the message given us through his written word, and we have his message that has been passed down throughout the generations to your grandparents and their grandparents and the grandparents before them, and on and on and on down through the chain of our family ancestry. And we have all that to thank to the 12 disciples and the work that they performed early on in the development of the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can't forget Brother Paul as well. So he says, Neither do I pray for these alone, which he mentioned through verses 1 through 19, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, through the spoken word of the disciples who carried the message out into all the parts of the world. And listen to what he prays, that they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. So the same relationship that the Son has with the Father and the Father has with the Son is the same exact relationship that we as the people of God should have with one another. And this crosses denominational lines because I promise you, God the Father is not a Baptist and Jesus a Presbyterian because there is no separation. There is no difference in what they believe. They are one in absolute perfect unity and harmony. And so, friends, I would go as far to say that the denominations that we have today are a deception of the enemy to cause division among us. And that's exactly what it's done. And this all boils down to a very simple aspect of humanity, and it's that of pride, hard-headedness, stubbornness, which all are elements of pride. You've got men that are too proud to lower themselves, to humble themselves, to gather and seek the truth and come to an understanding of what the Bible says, and yet most of the time what we see is people stand to believe what caters to their own lifestyle. And yet that's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying that they may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. So we're, just as Jesus is in perfect harmony with the Father and Father is in perfect harmony and unity with the Son, so we are to be in perfect harmony and unity with the Father and the Son as well. Why? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So Jesus is saying, in order for the world to understand that I truly have come from God, they will see this through my people. They will see this through my brothers and sisters. And the way they're going to see this is they're going to see a perfect unity and harmony. They're not going to see disagreement. They're not going to see conflict. They're not going to see fighting amongst each other. Those are all the things that go in, on in the world. That is what may occur in a business meeting, but not in the family of God. They're going to be perfect in harmony and unity. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one truth, one doctrine. Friends, how far we have come from that. 
Nobody sees eye to eye with anyone anymore. Nobody gets along with anybody anymore. Everybody is fighting. I mean, you've got Baptists fighting with Baptists. Pentecostals fighting with Pentecostals. Much less Baptists fighting with Pentecostals. Pentecostals fighting with Baptists. And on and on. Every denomination is in disharmony, in conflict with one another, and in absolute disagreement. And Jesus says, make them one in us, just as we are one together. Verse 22, he says, so that the glory which you gave me, that I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. That's how the glory of the Lord Jesus is going to be seen in his church. And if you ask most people who are not believers why they choose not to become Christians, one of the answers you're going to hear most often, why do I want to be a part of that? Those guys can't even get along together with one another. Me and my friends get along just fine. Why do I want to be a part of such conflict? And I absolutely agree with them. Verse 23, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. Perfect means complete, that they would be complete in one. And who is the one? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Just as as they are in perfect harmony, so we are to be in them, in that harmony, sharing in that harmony, in that unity that they share with one another. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am. So Jesus is praying that we would have the steadfastness, the commitment, the devotion to continue faithfully in the journey so that one day we can be with him. That they may behold my glory, says the Lord Jesus. They may see me as I truly am. And they being which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. So Jesus may have been born in the flesh on earth some 2,000 years ago, but he existed with the Father before the foundation of the world because it tells us here the Father loved him before the foundation of the world. He says in verse 25, O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee. Now friends, that means me and you too. We have not known the Father like Jesus knew the Father. And that should be our desperate plea each and every day. Father, reveal yourself to me. I know I can't take all your glory, but reveal to me what I can. Piece by piece, little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, truth upon truth. Reveal yourself unto me so that I may know you and walk faithfully before you all the days of my life. So he says, I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast sent me. And so again, he's speaking of the disciples and and the followers of the Lord Jesus. They know that you sent me. They believe that I am the promised one. They believe that I am the Messiah, says Jesus. And he says finally in verse 26 at the close of his prayer, I have declared unto them thy name. You see, Jesus didn't come to give himself glory Jesus didn't come to bring himself honor. He came to reveal the Father. And so he says, I've I've declared unto them your name, and I will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me, that same love may be in them, and I in them. And how is that love manifested? By the harmony and the unity, the companionship and the fellowship that we have with one another. And friends, that's quite a challenge because you know what that means? That means we're going to have to be willing to elevate others and take a back seat ourselves. That means we're going to have to be very patient, very loving, very kind, very concerned about others. We can't be pushy. We can't be easily provoked. We have to become calm and mild-mannered, working with people, helping them to see the truth. We, of course, first have to know the truth ourselves in order to teach others. But if the Bible is our guide, it is of no private interpretation, friends. All we have to do is read the Word of God and take it for what it says. 
Don't try to bend it to our own practices, our own lifestyles, but we conform our practices and our lifestyles to the word of God. And so I don't think Jesus can emphasize enough the end of this prayer and how important it is, nor can I this morning. Friends, we must be one. And the best thing that could happen among the Christian community is for all barriers to be torn down, all denominations to be put away, and all of us come into one faith, one unity, one Lord, one truth, one doctrine, one baptism, and living as an answered prayer to the prayer that the Lord Jesus just prayed, Lord, make them one. Now, friends, I wish that this could happen. I truly do. I wish that we could be one with those that we meet, those that we fellowship with, but that's never going to happen in this life. But there is coming a day, hallelujah, there is coming a day where the answer to this prayer will be fulfilled and we will truly be one in Jesus. Well, friends, I love you. I'm so grateful again that you are here with us today. I pray that this has touched you in some small way and that it will help you become a better follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.